Space is big. You won't believe how hugely, vastly, mind-bogglingly big it is. You may think it's a long way down to the bottle shop, but that's just peanuts to space. Vale, Douglas Adams. This video is about plate solving, which I'll explain for you so that you don't have to pretend to know what it is and risk looking like an idiot just in case you say something wrong. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. <laughs> This video is sponsored by my car. My car is amazing. It's the best car I've ever had. It's the best car I've ever been in. It's so good that the other day it actually drove itself out of a flood so that I could get in and I didn't even get wet. But if you're thinking about buying a Tesla and I'll be buying a second one because it's just amazing, use my referral code because you will get 1,500 kilometers free supercharging and I'll get the same as well. The only downside with owning a Tesla is that you run the risk of being a weird Elon Musk fanboy. And let's face it, not everything he says is defensible. Even though your expensive mount thinks it knows where it is, its go-to results are usually actually pretty questionable. I'll give you an example, and bear in mind, my mount is really well polar aligned. However, if I do a straight go-to, it doesn't quite get there. Let's try it now. Okay, let's try a simple go-to. I'm going to go to the heart of M8. Well, we're somewhere. Okay, yep, yeah, we are pretty close, but we're definitely not exactly where we want it to be. It's not where I told it to be. If you have a really big telescope, then this problem gets even worse because you're really zoomed in, and if your go-to is inaccurate, you're just a little bit off. It's a bit like bad sex. You're just almost there. It just takes a little more fiddling to get where you want to go. Your target might be out of frame, and you might find yourself star hopping or looking through the finder scope or manually trying to slew in to really get that target in the center of frame. In fact, you end up haphazardly slewing around the universe. It's bad enough for faint nebulae, but when we're talking about really faint galaxies or really small objects that are indistinguishable, like asteroids or sometimes comets when you're trying to find them, what you end up looking at is a really indistinguishable star field and it's really hard to find or work out, are you where you think you are? Plate solving sounds like a kitchen investigation, but it's actually a carryover term from the time when primitive supercomputers used to do the analysis. And by primitive supercomputers, I mean really super women. They would be able to scan a photographic plate and astrometrically solve the plate so that the celestial coordinates were correct. And that made it easier to do a survey of the sky and contributed greatly to our understanding of the stellar landscape. Now we have actual computers to do this for us. So when we slew to a position, we can ask the computer to take a photo, astrometrically solve that using its own internal database of stars, then tell the mount exactly how wrong it was in the first place and go to where you wanted it to go. Let me show you how this works. Let's try that again with a plate solve. So this time in Sequence Generator Pro, I'm going to say center on target. There's the plate solve there and it has already found a match. It was super quick, it took about a second actually. And it's telling me here that it has failed and then I'm off by a good 1000 pixels. So it's going to move the mount, take another picture and then plate solve again. There's the plate solve, and look how quick that was. Success, there we go. Now it's only 13, 15 pixels off. And there is a 30 second exposure into the heart of M8 Lagoon. Pretty cool, right? Now, calling it a super go-to is probably accurate, but it really doesn't show the full power of what plate solving does. Not only can we solve an image we've just taken, we can take an image from earlier, solve that image, and then use the celestial coordinates to go to there but also it's imperative for any kind of scientific data acquisition to know exactly where you were. If you discover an asteroid or a comet or anything, the celestial coordinates are paramount. Plate solving and syncing can also be used to improve the mount's internal model of the sky, thereby improving the go-to accuracy for each subsequent slew. And when you're doing images night after night and you want that framing to be exactly where it was on a previous night, 
then plate solving helps get you there as well. Most acquisition software packages for astronomy will have some sort of inbuilt plate solving. Uh, there's also something called uh, blind plate solving, where the plate solving software just makes no assumptions about where you are, what the frame of reference is, and may even pass over to an online service like astrometry.net. It takes a little longer, but it will solve the image and give you the exact celestial coordinates of that image. I'm using Plate Solve 2 in Sequence Generator Pro, but in the past I've also used Plate Solve 2 just through EQMod with a Skywatch amount. So there's a lot of open source software and freely available databases that you can plug in to your plate solving to make sure that this works for you. Make sure that the plate solving exposure or the test exposure that it's using to find its coordinates is long enough that you collect a lot of stars. The more stars you get, the more reference points it has to be able to make that determination. Use binning to artificially boost the signal of the stars. With binning, you can reveal stuff of fainter magnitudes without a longer exposure, and you don't need the resolution for plate solving. We're just trying to find coordinates here. Tip three, make sure that your polar alignment and star alignment are good in the first place. Uh, if your polar alignment is wrong, or if the starting coordinates for where it thinks it is, is too far away, it will start searching, usually internally in a spiral model, around those areas where it thinks it is until it finds a match. So if you're further away, it's gonna take longer. Uh, when plate solving is configured really well, it can really just take a second or two to plate solve. If you find your plate solve is going for minutes at a time, there's something wrong with the configuration. Which takes me to tip four. Tip four is make sure that your camera and telescope settings are accurate in the plate solving software. It's gonna want things like the image scale, which is the arc seconds per pixel of the setup. It's gonna want the focal length of your telescope. And if you're not sure about any of this, you can use the bin telastronomy calculator that I created that will give you the image scale, which you can plug into plate solve too or whatever software you're using. But you need all of these settings to be more or less as good as you can because it does make it really fast. Because let's face it, this is good drinking time we're wasting here. We wanna automate, get things going, and get back to the beer. So something cool happened while I was filming this video. I was doing the test shots for the plate solving for to demonstrate how plate solving works. And they really were just test shots. I was out there, the full moon was out, so I didn't really expect to take an image. I zoomed into a really close region of the M8 Lagoon. Anyway, the image turned out really well, uh, so I'll share it for you now. Hope you enjoyed this video on plate solving and I hope you now have a better understanding of what it is and how you can use it in your workflow, particularly your acquisition workflow. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, you've been watching Star Stuff. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. <laughs>